Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. For today's video, I'm dusting off my old Sandy Bridge Core i7 2600K test system and installing a GeForce GTX 1080i graphics card to see how well it holds up in all the latest and greatest gaming titles. Actually, more precisely, I want to see how much of a step forward the new Core i7 8700K is when compared to the seven-year-old quad-core. We know that the 2600K still has game, but for those rocking the old quad-core, next year could finally be the year they find themselves in need of that long-awaited upgrade. The GTX 1080 Ti might be the pinnacle of gaming right now, but before we reach this time next year, there's likely going to be something even better, and as a result, you can expect mid-range GPUs to have a little more poke. For testing the Core i7 2600K, we have 11 titles on hand, each of which has been tested using three different quality presets. The focus here will be on the 1080p resolution, but we also have some 1440p results as well. Though, of course, these are more GPU bound, but many of you seem more interested in those results, so I have included them. Recently, I compared the fourth generation Core i7 4770K under the same test conditions and found that it was still hanging in there remarkably well, even with the mighty GTX 1080 Ti. So will the much older second generation 2600K prove just as impressive? Let's jump into the benchmarks to find out, shall we? First up, we have Ashes of the Singularity. See, I said it right. I bet you weren't expecting that. So out of the box, the 2600K delivered the same 69 FPS minimum and 77 FPS average, and that made it a little over 40% slower than the 8700K. Surprisingly, overclocking the 2600K to 4.8 GHz only placed it on par with the stock 4770K, and while that did allow for very playable performance, it was still around 30% slower than the 8700K. Now, increasing the visual quality settings with the extreme preset, that didn't really change much. Here, the 2600K was 28% slower than the 8700K, so it's still trailed by a rather significant margin. Now it's time to get all crazy. I feel like they oversold this preset, but anyway, here we have a mostly GPU-bound scenario. Though even so, out of the box, the 2600K takes a beating for the average frame rate. Overclocked performance was boosted by 22% to 88 FPS, and now the 2600K is only 9% slower than the majority of the 7th and 8th generation CPUs. Then finally, the last Ashes of the Benchmark test was conducted at 1440p, and here the margins close up a little more, but even so, the overclocked 2600K was still around 6% slower than the more modern Intel processors. Right, so next up we have the Battlefield 1 results, and boy has the Core i7 2600K aged in this one, at least when using the medium quality settings at 1080p with a mighty powerful graphics card. Under those conditions, it does look pretty slow, but then it is a seven-year-old CPU, so keeping that in mind, it's actually quite impressive. Anyway, here it was again roughly 40% slower than the 8700K, and even when overclocked, struggles to match the stock 4770K. Increasing the visual quality settings with the high preset doesn't really change much. The 2600K is almost 40% slower than the 8700K, and once overclocked, again falls just short of the stock 4770K, which is quite a surprising result, I have to say. Even with the ultra quality settings enabled, the 2600K still gets completely trampled. Here it was 35% slower than the stock 8700K. That said, with both CPUs overclocked, the margin is reduced to 22% for the average, though I should note the 8700K is GPU limited for this test. The 1% low result is a better indicator of true performance, and here the 2600K was 30% slower. It's worth pointing out, though, that most GTX 1080 Ti owners, they're probably not that interested in playing Battlefield 1 at such a low resolution. 1440p certainly seems more appropriate. Here we find an even more GPU-limited scenario, and as a result, the 2600K was just 9% slower than the 8700K when comparing the average frame rate once both CPUs were overclocked. Of course, it is the 1% low results that we probably should focus on, and here the 2600K was still 21% slower, and that's certainly a noteworthy deficit. Next up, we have Dawn of War 3, and here the stock 2600K makes out quite poorly, it has to be said, dipping below 60 FPS at times. Interestingly, memory speed doesn't appear to have much or any of an impact here, and that's not something I would have guessed, to be honest. Evidently, a big part of the issue here is the clock speed, as the 2600K saw a very nice 28% boost in average frame rate and a 26% boost for the 1% low result once overclocked. 
That said though, it was still 23% slower than the overclocked 8700K, but that's the closest medium quality test result we've seen yet. Increasing the visual quality settings with the high preset changed virtually nothing as we see almost the exact same frame rates, and as a result, the same margins. Even with the maximum quality settings enabled, we see almost no difference in frame rate from the medium quality settings. We're obviously extremely CPU bound in this title. That said though, jumping to 1440p, we're both CPU and GPU bound, depending on which configuration you look at. Even so, the overclock 2600K was still 22% slower than the 8700K when comparing the 1% low results, but just 14% slower for the average frame rate thanks to the 8th gen series being limited by the GTX 1080 Ti. Wow, here is another title where the stock 2600K looks painfully slow compared to the more modern processors. Even the 4770K is worlds faster here. In fact, once again, overclocking the 2600K to 4.8 GHz isn't even enough to see it overtake the stock 4770K. This means overclocked the 2600K is 28% slower than the 8700K. Increasing the visual quality settings to very high reduced the 28% margin seen previously, ever so slightly, to 25%. Then, with the ultra quality settings enabled, the 8700K and its 8th generation PALs slam into a GPU brick wall, as they find themselves locked at an average of 90 FPS. This afforded the overclock 2600K the opportunity to catch up, and now it's just 13% slower. Of course, the margin is reduced even further at 1440p, and now the overclock 2600K is just 3% slower, as the game's primarily GPU bound at this point. Moving on, we have Dirt 4, and this time overclocking the 2600K to 4.8 GHz was enough to nudge it ahead of the stock 4770K, albeit just ahead. This meant overclocked it was 27% slower than the overclocked 8700K. Interestingly, increasing the quality preset sees the overclock 2600K fall quite some distance behind the stock 4770K, and as a result, it's now 31% slower than the overclocked 8700K. I'm not sure what's gone wrong for the 2600K here, so let's move on to the ultra quality preset to see what we find. Here we do see a similar situation, and although the overclock 2600K has managed to close in on the 8700K, that's really only due to the fact that the 8th generation processors have found the limits of the 1080Ti. Again, you'll notice that the 2600K is still quite a long way behind the 4770K. That's really quite an interesting result. Even at 1440p, the overclock 2600K trails the 4770K by quite a large margin, despite nudging closer to a GPU-bound 8700K. Still, the 1% low result for the overclock 2600K is surprisingly low. Here, it's still 23% slower than the 4770K. And moving right along, next up we have F1 2017, and although the 2600K does trail behind the pack by quite a large margin, it also provided well over 100 FPS at all times, so highly playable performance then. Still, if we use F1 2017 as a measuring stick with the medium quality settings, the 2600K was 23% slower than the 8700K, and 27% slower once both CPUs are overclocked. Jumping up to the high quality settings, and here we see that once overclocked, the 2600K is able to nudge ahead of the 4770K this time. Still, it was 26% slower than the 8700K when comparing the overclocked results. Now, with the ultra high quality preset enabled, the GTX 1080 Ti starts to limit the performance of the 8700K, and this means overclocked the 2600K is now just 12% slower. Then finally, increasing the resolution to 1440p results in a heavy GPU bottleneck, and now the 2600K is just 6% slower than the 8700K, though it does only roughly match the stock 4770K. Assassin's Creed Origins buckles the Core i7-2600K, breaking it down to just 52 FPS at times before we overclock. Then once overclocked, we still see dips as low as 62 FPS, and this meant it was around 30% slower than the 8700K, which I should note was still GPU limited, even with the medium quality preset enabled. Interestingly, the margin for the 1% low result grows with the high quality preset enabled. Now the overclock 2600K is 33% slower, and of course the 8700K is still GPU limited. The 2600K's average frame rate result is more impressive, but that 1% low figure clearly shows the aging quad-core struggles with this title, even when overclocked.
Now, with the ultra high quality settings enabled, the Overclock 2600K trails by a country mile when looking at the 1% low data. Here it was 31% sold in the 8700K, which is still heavily GPU bound. I had assumed when testing the 4770K that the poor minimum FPS performance was down to the use of slower DDR3 memory, but limited memory bandwidth doesn't appear to be the issue here when comparing the 2600K with 1600 and 2133 memory. Interestingly, at 1440p, we start to see some separation between the various 8th generation CPUs when looking at the 1% low result, and I have to say that's kind of unexpected. Although the average frame rates are much the same across the board, there is a reasonably large variance in the 1% low figures. Here the overclock 2600K was still 18% sold in the 8700K, though it did match the Core i5-8400. Like F1 2017, the frame rates are quite high in project cars with the 2600K, though despite that, it is still a country mile behind the 8700K. With both CPUs overclocked, the 2600K was 22% slower for the average frame rate and 28% slower for the minimum frame rate. Overclocked, the 2600K was able to pull ahead of the 4770K and although much slower than the overclocked 8700K, looked pretty solid overall. Now this is peculiar, the overclocked 2600K for the first time in our testing is able to roughly match the overclocked 4770K. Honestly, I was expecting to see a lot more of this, but for whatever reason, the overclocked 2600K has struggled to keep pace with the fourth generation 4770K. The trend continues with the ultra quality settings and here the overclock 2600K is just 16% slower than the 8700K or 20% slower if we look at the 1% data. However, jumping up to 1440p almost neutralizes the playing field entirely, and now the overclock 2600K is less than 10% slower than the 8700K. The 2600K also enjoyed a solid 22% performance boost from the overclock. With Rainbow Six Siege, the 2600K is back to getting absolutely pummeled at high frame rates. Despite an almost 20% increase in performance once overclocked, it was still slightly slower than the stock 4770K, and as a result, the overclocked 2600K was 31% slower than the overclocked 8700K. The margin is reduced to 26% with the high quality preset enabled, but even so, the 2600K is really showing its age in this title. Of course, it did maintain well over 100 FPS at all times, but in relation to the newer CPUs tested, it looked pretty slow. As we increase the GPU load, the margins continue to close, and now the 2600K is just 17% slower than the 8700K when comparing the average frame rate, although it was 22% slower for the minimum frame rate. Those gaming at 1440p will notice less of a difference between the various CPUs tested. That said, despite just 6% separating them for the average frame rate, the overclock 2600K was still 18% slower than the 8700K when looking at the 1% low results. Moving on to the second last game tested, Total War Warhammer 2, we again find the stock 2600K really struggling, at least when compared to the modern CPUs. Dipping down to 100 FPS meant the 2600K was 37% slower than the 8700K. That said though, overclocking really does help the old Sandy Bridge processor, boosting the minimum frame rate by 27%, making it 20% slower than the 8700K. Once again though, we see that the 8700K is limited by the GTX 1080 Ti. I had expected the higher quality preset to reduce the margin between the 2600K and the 8700K, but it's done the opposite. Stock the 2600K is now 39% slower, and when overclocked, it still trailed the GPU limited 8700K by a 29% margin. These margins can be seen when looking at the 1% low data. Quite shockingly, even the ultra quality settings don't allow the 2600K to catch up, and here it's much slower than expected. I'd say there has to be some kind of design or platform limitation here. Bumping the resolution up to 1440p, we finally see the margin close up, but even so, the overclock 2600K is nowhere near where you'd expect it to be, still trailing every other CPU tested by an 8% margin. The 4770K also uses DDR3 memory, albeit higher clock 2400 stuff, but still, while that might aid the margin we're seeing, it really has to be down to IPC improvements. Wrapping things up, we have the Call of Duty World War II results, and as usual, we'll start with the medium, or in this case, normal quality settings. Here, the overclock 2600K is able to edge out the 4770K, albeit by a slim margin. Meanwhile, when compared to the 8700K, the overclock 2600K was 28% slower when comparing the 1% data.
Again, we find that when increasing the quality settings, this time to high, the margin actually increases. The overclock 2600K is now 33% slower than the overclock 8700K when comparing the 1% low data. The margin remains much the same even with the extra quality settings enabled. Here, the overclock 2600K was 32% slower than the 8700K. Even at 1440p, we again see similar margins, and here the overclock 2600K was 33% slower than the 8700K. So for those seeking maximum frame rates in this fast-paced first-person shooter, you're not going to want a Sandy Bridge processor. Okay, so if you've made it this far, well done. I'll get some t-shirts made up saying something like, I survived 968 benchmark results. And if you only just made it, well, prepare to brace yourself because I've got two more graphs showing the average performance across the 11 games tested. So let's check that out before wrapping things up. Across the 11 games tested, if we look at the data from the lowest quality presets tested at 1080p, this is what we find. The overclocked 2600K was 27% slower than the overclocked 8700K when comparing the average frame rate, or I suppose you could say the 8700K was 37% faster. This is true for both the average frame rate and 1% low result. On average, the overclock 2600K was also only able to match the stock 4770K and was therefore beaten by the stock 7600K. That said though, in games such as Battlefield 1, the 2600K still provided a much better experience when compared to the quad-core Core i5 processor. For those gaming at what's probably a more realistic resolution, the overclock 2600K was just 17% slower than the 8700K when comparing the 1% low results, and that's still a pretty big margin to be honest, especially given how heavily limited the 8700K was in most of the games. The 2600K was 10% slower when comparing the average frame rate, but really it's those 1% low results that gamers will notice the most. Right, so if you're a Core i7 2600K owner, what does this mean for you? Well, currently, probably not a lot. Uh, if you're running a graphics card that's equal to or slower than a GTX 1070, for now, you really don't need to do anything, assuming that you've overclocked that sucker to at least 4.5 gigahertz. At the stock clock speeds, the 2600K will often limit performance of a GTX 1070 or Vega 56 graphics card, so be aware of that. And with a GTX 1060 or an RX 580, for example, you'll have no such problem. Overclocked, the 2600K averaged 140 FPS in Battlefield 1. A GTX 1070, well, that's good for around 115 FPS with an 8700K, so for the most part, you should be okay there. Call of Duty World War 2, it's a little closer there. Uh, the GTX 1070, that's good for 133 FPS on average with the 8700K. The overclocked 2600K, well, that managed just 134 FPS with the 1080 Ti, so you're certainly on the edge there with a 2600K and a 1070 combo. If you are playing the latest and greatest tiles on an overclocked 2600K with a GTX 1080 or better, then without question, the little old CPU, it is restricting performance quite a bit there. Of course, the 2600K is now a seven-year-old CPU, so the fact that it's holding up high-performance GPUs in 2017 probably shouldn't be that surprising. I think it's fair to say that Sandy Bridge has fared well over the years. It's certainly better than any other CPU architecture we've seen before, or at least any that I can recall, but we're now at the end of the road. The next generation of GPUs will likely see budget mid-range models finding the limits of the 2600K, and at that point it will certainly be worth upgrading. Still, if you're serious about your games and you play titles such as Battlefield 1 or Call of Duty World War 2, then I strongly suggest you look at upgrading to an 8th gen core processor or maybe 2017's best value option, the Ryzen 5 1600. Speaking of which, in the next update, I'll finally add some Ryzen CPUs to these results. And on that note, I'm going to end this one and get back to some benchmarking. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.